It's September 2017 and we are in the presence of one of the most active hurricane seasons on record. But the question is, is it our fault? Are we changing our planet's atmospheric and oceanic circulation patterns? If so, how do we fix it? Welcome to The STEM, let's figure it out. Before we just dive into the problem, we need to understand what a hurricane is and how they form. We spoke with thermodynamics expert Dr. Jason Harrelton on the making of these monsters. Hurricanes are basically a, a huge thermodynamic uh, engine. The ocean water starts to warm up. The hot, moist water will lift up because well, hot air rises, well, so does hot steam, hot water. And so as it rises up, it starts to move outward and starts to dissipate outward. This is due to the way energy just disperses. And as that does that, it creates a very low pressure environment right near the water. Well, what's gonna happen is more air is gonna rush in to fill that gap. And that starts to turn and spiral. Okay, so the low pressure area inside of a hurricane's eye acts as an intake by sucking in water vapor from high pressure areas. Hurricanes literally use water as fuel, which is why we don't see them forming over land. But why do we only see hurricanes forming in certain parts of the world? While they can't just form over any body of water, hurricanes thrive where the ocean surfaces are warm, particularly in areas near the equator. But not just specifically hurricanes. You see, hurricanes are just one variation of tropical cyclones, also known as the most violent storms on Earth. Because the Earth is spinning, there are these things called Coriolis forces. More commonly referred to as the Coriolis effect, this causes cyclones to turn counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere. This creates multiple variations of tropical cyclones. For instance, typhoons in the northeastern Pacific, hurricanes in the Atlantic, and cyclones in the Indian Ocean. Speaking of tropical cyclones, Hurricane Irma is headed this way and I should get out of here. South Florida right now, I'm two miles above the ground, and believe it or not, there's even traffic in the air. Everybody's headed northwest to keep their planes from getting destroyed. Right now, I'm headed to Tallahassee to stay with my friend Kenny until the storm is over. Once it's over, I'm going to head back to Miami to check out the wreckage. Hopefully, it's not too bad. Alright, so there's good news and bad news. The good news is I made it to my friend Kenny's house in Tallahassee. Okay. But the bad news is the storm's headed right this way. But that raises the question, how do we predict where hurricanes are going to go? We'll find out in our next stop. I landed in Andalusia, alone. No place to stay, no plan. That was at least until the locals showed up. They helped me park my plane in a hangar and the fire department dropped me off at a nearby airport cafe, only to spend hours upon hours upon hours looking for just one hotel room. So the folks at the South Alabama Regional Airport helped me find this hotel and even drove me here, so I truly have to thank them for their hospitality and their generosity because this is really the last hotel room in the entire state of Alabama. But now I have two days to wait out this storm until I can fly the plane back to South Florida, so I thought I'd take this time to really figure out how meteorologists predict where these storms are going to go. During that process, I stumbled upon Alan Seals. He's the chief meteorologist at WKRG, and he's earned nearly 5 million views for his Hurricane Irma coverage, as well as the title for Best Weatherman Ever. I'm going to try and get in contact with him now and see if he can help us out with our question. It's the regions of high pressure and low pressure around the Earth which create a steering current. Uh, and when you're near the equator, the, the current almost always goes from east to west, but those currents have ripples or they have waves. Uh, and they, they interact with each other. That's what makes it so difficult. Think of it as a leaf floating down a stream. The leaf is just going to float in the same direction forever, right? Wrong. It may be moving in a certain direction one moment, but after butting heads with a rock or a current, it moves in an entirely new direction. So it's not as simple as seeing whether a hurricane is moving east or west. It requires constant monitoring of computer models. 
data is collected from geostationary satellites, hurricane hunters, and weather balloons, which gives meteorologists access to the storm's temperature, pressure, humidity, wind speeds, and atmospheric changes. So using this data, could scientists come to a conclusion on whether this year's very active hurricane season is linked to climate change? Well, the warmer the ocean's surface temperature, the more water evaporates, which in turn lowers the net air pressure and causes the storm to increase in size and in wind speed. According to NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, from the top 10 highest ocean surface temperatures recorded in July, nine of them were in the 21st century, with 2016 holding the record for the highest global land and ocean surface temperature recorded to date, which could explain the growing activity in the Atlantic. More and more evidence that humans are having an effect on climate change, and so therefore, you know, what can we do to try to minimize the dramatic increase for these types of events? You can't take any single storm and say, yes, this is it, or no, this is not it. Um, and when you talk about climate, it truly is many, many years and decades of averages. We need to understand the Earth, period, uh, because we're stuck here. If you live near any of the affected areas this hurricane season, be sure to check in with local officials on how to get involved in the recovery efforts. Remember to hit the like button below, subscribe to DLG Studios, and tune into Spinnaker Television for future episodes. Let us know in the comments below what you would name a future hurricane. Thank you for watching, we'll see you next time on The Stand. Thank you.